The world of Elemental is devastated, broken. There was no fix for this. There was no fix, which is horrifying. You realize that the entire premise of the engine that we just spent multiple years developing is wrong. Well, I'm Brad Bordell. I'm the founder and CEO of Stardock. Some years ago, we made a fantasy strategy game called Elemental War Magic. And I'd like to tell you about the challenges and, well, horror we ran into in trying to create that game. So our dream for Elemental when it started was that we were going to make the ultimate fantasy turn-based strategy game. So you're going to be in this living world where every single unit in the game would look different. Every unit would have its own clothing. Everyone, the units could actually get married and have their own children and the, and the units would, uh, the children would grow up and they would look different from the, their parents. We had this really cool city system where you could, you could literally design your own cities. It's almost like a SimCity type thing where I could place buildings and the buildings would interact with each other and you could actually zoom in and see the little people living in the city. It was really cool. Every single unit you could put on their own boots and shield and pants and everything. Even uh, your civilians could have dresses. And you could, I mean, we had a whole bunch of dresses in the game. So we were in a time where game development had moved into making 3 engines. But strategy games had only recently started to embrace 3D engines. That's where you can rotate the map and the units are 3D modeled and all that and it's being rendered in real time. So it was, it was an interesting era because people wanted to have their units have uh, high fidelity but we were still using 32-bit operating systems which meant that you could only see two gigabytes of memory. So 32-bit versions of Windows only allow you to have two gigabytes of total memory. So even though you can in theory have four gigs, you could only allocate two gigabytes. We're probably year two in the Elemental and we're, we're just getting strange crashes. Now the underlying system was extremely complex because we knew well beforehand that what we want to do would not fit in two gigabytes of memory. So we developed a really sophisticated system to handle uh, allocating and deallocating memory on the fly really fast so that you could you would never run out of total memory. About two years into the project though we, we kept running into problems where things would just randomly crash or weird things would start happening that we weren't expecting and so our training and our experience had told us well there's a, a memory leak somewhere or there's a uh, out of uh, uh, ray out of bounds type error or any of the numerous traditional problems that game development runs into. So we started changing the design of the game and more and more of our time was going into refactoring the game's design, taking visuals out of the game because we just said that this is, maybe an artist had too big of a texture and that was causing a problem. Or maybe this, uh, having every race having the truly unique looking creatures was causing a problem. And even though we weren't coming close to running out of memory, you, you know, load up Task Manager and it would say, well, you're only using 800 megabytes of memory and yet we would get these random out of memory errors. The game was getting more stable as we pulled things out, which at the time told us, aha, we're doing something right because it is getting more stable. But if you played it long enough, it would crash 100% of the time if you played long enough. I had great confidence in our team. And to me, it was just, as an engineer, it was a technical issue. The game's crashing, all I had to do is take the time and find out where the bug in the code was, except it wasn't a bug in the code. After Elemental shipped, I, I got into the code myself. So I, I started looking and I started looking and I found a tool that measured memory fragmentation. So I downloaded it and loaded it up and after a couple hours, the largest contiguous piece of memory would be only like one megabyte. The memory had gotten so fragmented after enough hours because we're constantly allocating and deallocating memory that no matter what, you just didn't have any memory free, which meant and in our case, what we ultimately discovered to our horror after the game shipped uh, is that it's memory fragmentation. That is, it doesn't matter how much memory you have available. What really matters 
is the, the largest contiguous piece of memory you can allocate. We had so mutilated our original design that someone would go and say, wow, there's a lot of neat stuff here, but where's the games? We ended up with a lot less of the meat that makes a game good because we had so take, we had taken out so many of the systems to solve this. And then ultimately, none of those things solved it. So when Elemental came out, the, the backlash on it was so strong. We had never shipped a bad game before. And this was just absolutely crushing to morale here, to um, our sense of selves. It was, it was horrible. And we actually had a fan who had made fan shirts of the game because he was a Master of Magic fan send us a dirty shirt. One of the shirts he had made and given to the people, his own shirt that it was used and stuff as a protest. We had so many fans that were upset about it. We were, we were crushed. It's been seven years and I think about that game pretty much every day. Someone's gonna say, how could they have not known about memory fragmentation? But if you go and you take a, if you're really honest with yourself, it's not that commonly known. Even now it is quite challenging to find decent memory fragmentation tools. It just doesn't come up that much. Well, and nowadays it doesn't come up at all. You just make your game 64 bit and call it a day. If we had just waited a little longer to make the game, we could have had a large address aware or some any number of other ways to get around this problem. But it was just that, just that time. So, I mean, in hindsight, I, I mean, I think of all the mistakes we made if we had waited a little longer, could we, it would have been stabler, but we were never able to fully address the issue without completely changing the game. We ended up giving its sequel, Fallen Enchantress, free to everyone who bought Elemental, but we had to make fundamental game design changes to it. And you know, we had built a pre-allocation system for it, which solved a lot of the problems that made it a lot more stable. Our newest engine, Nitrous, um, that does pre-allocation. Galsiv 3 has pre-allocation, but we were never able to do our original vision for Elemental because of that.